Another rip roaring fun edition of what we like to call the Plotaholics. Yeah, I'm posing. I'm striking a pose. Are you? Are you? Pumped. Well, I saw that you were hitting what I would call a variation on the Hogan. Yeah, I'm trying to hear it. I want to <laughs> hear it. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, we're back, baby. We are. Yeah. We have returned. Yeah, we took last week off, man. It was a little bit of a slow week, but we have a, a ton of stuff going week. on this week. It was a very um, slow week. There, there was literally nothing really. The only thing that really went on last week was the fact that, uh, what's his name, Peter Cabalt, Cabal, the doctor, the older doctor. The doctor. The doctor is going to be in Fast and the Furious 9. Yeah. And cool. You know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, what, what else can really be said about... Um, the uh, Fast and the Furious franchise that I haven't fussed about before. I mean, really. Yeah. I am uh, in the process of pushing all of this out uh, <laughs> to as many yeah. people as I can. Absolutely. There we go. Now I can share this to my timeline. There, yeah, there is a there's a weird little glitch going on uh, with Facebook as of recently that uh, makes it tough uh, to... Uh, well, yeah, they've added a couple of clicks to the share thing if you're sharing from a page. So, uh, just something that yeah, you, know, you got to keep keep your head on a swivel for. But uh, Brian, but while anything. we are while we're pushing all of that out, let's uh, go ahead and hit on some of our plotaholics yeah, news. We have, we have just to, to update into. people, uh, yeah. we are smack dab in the middle of Will Smith Timber. Literally the in the middle, L literally in the middle. You know, um, two weeks ago we did Independence Day. That was a lot of fun. Then we went to uh, Men in Black. Mm -hmm. I actually have a funny story about uh, Men in Black for you there, Shane. Oh, let's hear it. And I'm pretty sure I already said it on the uh, the podcast, but I want to say it again for those <laughs> live. So at the end of watching Men in Black, as Sharon hadn't seen it before, guys. Yeah. So I got all excited. I got up to go you know, get the DVD out of the uh, Xbox because you know it's time to get into DDP Yoga. You know, yep, I'll throw a plug out to uh, DDP Yoga because it ain't your mom's it. yoga. Oh, yeah, I've already lost just about 20 pounds doing that yeah, in about a month. Killing so, it. You are trying. killing it, sir. Absolutely. I'm also in the 100-day challenge, so it's going to be 100 days straight every day of yoga. So I can't I can't wait. So I went to go get the disc out, and I started doing the uh, the, the, the Men in Black dance that Will Smith does in the video. And yeah. I'm all just getting started. And then I look over, and Sharon's got her phone up trying to record it like she's secret agent Sharon. And I yeah, just you did stopped. tell me the story, and I'm really only upset that she failed miserably yeah, at she, 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 capturing yeah. the moment. Yeah, she she she's not a PI, my fiance. She she's not a she's not a PI, but <laughs> she, tried. You know, she she tried. she did the best that she can, I guess, and that yeah. is the saddest sentence I've ever said. Well, I am <laughs> well, I am also a relatively eagle-eyed person. I like to yeah. Um, so this week, Brian, we get into um bad boys. What you gonna uh, do? I, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Anita in the house. Anita's <laughs> here, yeah. Uh, Brian, oh God, I started God. watching Bad Boys today for the very first time ever, and really? I gotta tell you, I was the I'm the reason that we're watching this movie, mm -hmm. uh, and I the reason like that it. I thought we should watch this movie is because I thought we needed a Will Smith action flick. But not so many others to choose from. Not just the sci-fi stuff, but I thought maybe it would be interesting to get into some of the um, <laughs> Kelly Russell in the house. I thought it would be interesting to see sort of you know his first big action role. That's uh, true. That that is his. Um, actually, didn't Bad Bad Boys came? Let me double check my source. Um, Bad Boys came before uh, Independence uh, Day. Independence Day. That's right. So. When I when I as I'm watching uh, and I don't want to say too much about it because we have to talk about it for an hour tomorrow, um, yeah. <laughs> which uh, spoiler alert we might have to dig into some of our other Will Smith material <laughs> 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 because 
I've Shane been, was not a fan. I, well, I haven't finished it quite yet. Oh, you're not done. Where, where, where did you leave off? Uh, I wish I could tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think something had just either been shot or blown up. Oh, so um, you're still at the very beginning. Right. <laughs> because remember, it is a Michael Bay film. Right. You have to have an explosion every 5.2 seconds. Yeah. I So I, so he, let me have I'll, – I'll confess something to you, Brian. Okay. I am not – a huge fan of act of straight up action films. Really? Yeah. Like the, the shoot 'em up type of film is not my favorite. So you don't like lethal weapon. Um, gotta be honest. I don't think I've ever seen lethal weapon. Dude, that is a Christmas movie. You <laughs> I know that. We're, well, we got, we got a couple of these things coming as, as we get go down the stretch here, but true. But I'm telling you, like, I don't know what it is there. They almost uh, an action film almost has to have some sort of a sci-fi bent to it. Uh, some other some something other than just like we're cops and you're the bad guys. Or wow, so you don't we, like Rambo. So you've never seen any of the Rambo films. You never no, seen First Blood. I have. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're breaking. My Isn't that heart. weird? I mean we we all have our we all have our thing. I guess you know. Yeah. And. And no, for me, I was I was a fan of uh, of sci-fi and whatnot. And so, like a- action films with a sci-fi bent, like The Matrix and things like that, I've been a really big fan of. Right. Um, oh my god, straight action flicks are like that. That is great summertime fun. Well, that's yeah. The I don't know. I just have a hard time with it. And I think the reason I have a hard time with it is because I don't give a shit. <laughs> about, you know, like, and, and this goes, this goes back to sort of what we talked about with what Independence Day did so well, is that made me care about the characters, right? And as like a straight, I'm talking like a brawny sort of action film, right? Right. I don't care <laughs> about so, these people. Wow. So no Lethal Weapon, no Forty Eight Hours, no First Blood, no Rambo flicks, no Commando. Um, no, um, I'm trying to think. No, Die Hard. Now, see, I loved Predator. That's one that, that we, yeah, but like, that's a sci fi, right? Film. Yeah, exactly. And you know why I care about that? Because that's an effing alien that's trying to kill all of us. <laughs> so, like, there are actual stakes. I feel like in a lot of action films, the stakes are only as big as the care, the couple of people shooting at each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, do you know what this winner? We are going to fix that because we are going to put some action films on the bill. Well, and I will admit that bad boy. Now I'm not saying that I I am opposed to it. I have, I have some that I enjoy. If I were hard pressed, like I could probably pull some out. Um, I love that movie. Shoot 'em up. (laughs) And I love hot fuzz, but again, these aren't straight action films. Yeah. Hot fuzz isn't even a straight action. These are comedies. That's an action or something else. Well, what's funny is that hot fuzz. Well, technically hot, fuzz has a straight action movie feel it's but a, it's a parody it's a, it's a parody right. of the action flicks wow that means that a lot of those movies from hot fuzz so you you've never watched a uh, point break yeah no wow <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah it's, i know it's wild i know and, and uh. especially as a plot of holic this is my blind spot fair enough uh, friend well, yeah we've got plenty of time to fix that because yeah, this is my like blind spot <laughs> um like i feel like i feel like the thing that i am better versed in than you are is like the b-list movies like my- yeah I, I can give you well because my, my b-list stuff was more back when i was a kid with cable and right. i would just catch these gems now i'm just like if I'm thumbing through Amazon or Netflix yeah. or whatever, I might see a couple that catch my eye. See, like, I am I'm tracking. in there looking for that stuff. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, and I'm we fine. have big news coming on the B list front soon. Oh, I am excited about but, that. Because- yeah, we we are not quite ready to reveal yet, but um, I think just as a little tease, uh, you guys might all want to go check out this flick called Velocipaster. <laughs> and I actually I I watched it. And I'll tell you something right now. I'm like <laughs> typing at Shane in all caps, like, what the fuck is that? It is the most excellent thing I've seen in a little while. It Look, is- over the weekend uh, here in the uh, in the Wilson Winfrey Ivy Snow household, we uh, watched three movies. Okay. We watched a movie called Banana Splits, the movie. Oh, God. 
uh, which is a movie about animatronic car uh, animatronic uh, characters in a children's show coming to life and killing people, or I guess ma malfunctioning and killing people. That sounds interesting. We watched Velocipaster and we watched Ma starring the Octavia I do, Spencer. I do need to see Ma. I do need to Velocipaster see was easily the most entertaining. Really? Like far and away the most entertaining of those three movies. <laughs> Ma wow. was far and away the most disappointing. So, really? Oh, yeah, that it hurts was. My feelings, man. That hurts. Yeah, and it hurt my feelings because I, like an hour and some change into it, I started screaming at the screen. <laughs> Something <laughs> happened. <laughs> 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 well then well then you know what let me challenge you for let me challenge you to watch two movies this weekend okay contracted okay. and contracted phase two contracted and contracted phase two and if you have the time gangs of the dead okay so contracted mm -hmm. contracted two contracted phase two oh contracted phase two Mm -hmm. and gangs of the dead gangs of the dead okay yes i challenge you because those are within the last you know what i'll even be more generous of the last seven years those are gems that i sort of found on netflix hulu yeah okay Amazon. so i should be able to find those pretty easily then i would think so like contracted one and two you're probably going to have to run off of xbox That's because funny. they were on netflix and now they're not gangs yeah. of the dead last time i saw was available with prime yeah. Well, um, just to hit back on this real quick. Yep. Uh, so we're going to actually for the first time since we started this looking forward to Wild Wild West. You know what? I'm looking forward to it also because I've noticed that when I watch movies for the show, mm -hmm. my brain instantly goes to critic mode. Yeah, it goes. It, it does. Uh, it consumes things a little bit differently for sure. It really does, because I actually looked at bad boys in a whole different light this time around. Did you like it the same amount or did you like it more? Well, here's the thing. I didn't so much like bad boys, but I found it enjoyable. But I think this time around, I was pointing out to myself all the inaccuracies of police procedure in everything as well. But, yeah, right. I, but I was able to more appreciate Oh well, Brian, you can't hold the the these two cops no, no, you, to the no, same standards of, yeah, of police bureaucracy. These are the bad boys. That is true. I can't. And then, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna save the rest of this analysis for the actual podcast. But I will say that I'm able to appreciate more. I'm able to appreciate the cast a lot more, yeah. and hate Michael Bay a little bit more. <laughs> You're right, yeah. Uh, because, Brian, before we, we, we've got a, a handful of people uh, on the line here. Before we get, before they start checking out or, or moving on here, let's yeah, go yeah. ahead and announce our big Halloween October yes, uh, event. Let's do, that. let's do it now. Um, so, without further ado, uh, the Plotaholics podcast presents Listener's Choice Halloween 2019. Yes, guys. Uh, our first Halloween together. And you get to choose. We've got three weeks of programming, and you guys get to choose what we do. Now, you see in the bookend, I Am Legend leads us into Halloween, and we couldn't think of a better film to do so, especially coming from Will Smith right. Timber. Yeah, so uh, I Am Legend is technically the last film of Will Smith Timber leading us into listeners' Halloween. And those three first weeks of October are. So we, we sort of took a sub-genre approach and picked uh, five films from a variety of horror sub-genres uh, that we will present to you, the audience, and then we will collect your votes and, uh, and we'll do those films. And so right now, after the show tonight, uh, we are opening voting on our October the 7th show, I believe. Uh, yeah, I believe that is the case. That is... Uh, voting will go live tonight and it includes the following films. Yep. So you got Darkness Falls, Evil Dead. Now, are we going to do the original Evil Dead, the remake of Evil Dead, or Evil Dead 2? Do we decide? Uh, well, I don't, we have not decided. Um, if so people if you have vote, a preference, 
if you vote evil dead, you could be voting for, you know what you can even do. If you do vote evil dead, I would even say, leave a comment of which evil dead. Now, as much as we love army of darkness, we're actually kind of eliminating army of darkness. Isn't that right, Shane? Yeah. We're, we're eliminating army of darkness because army of darkness isn't a horror film. Army of darkness is it, it's in its own weird genre. Right. But the um, original evil dead, evil dead two and the evil dead remake are horror films. Right. So darkness falls evil dead the original exorcist not no remakes no sequels the original og the og killer then <laughs> poltergeist again no sequels no remakes the og original poltergeist and then finally the haunting so for our october 7th film and after this show is over we will have the poll up on our Facebook page. So right. We'll, we'll have that up on Facebook. We'll put it up on the website. We'll put it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, everywhere. Feel we'll free also to drop a comment in uh, below wherever you're watching. Now we will count it. Uh, Absolutely. So, so if you vote now, we will count it. And if your vote is for Evil Dead, specify Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2, or the Evil Dead remake if those are your vote. If that's your that's vote. Right. Yep. Uh, one of these films will slide into that first listener's choice category. We mm -hmm. will have voting open from tonight after the show till next Tuesday before the show. Uh, right. And then we'll announce our winner during the show next week and open the voting for the next slot. So absolutely. So guys make sure, you know, we, we say that we want to do this for you guys. We want you guys to have a good time with our live show and especially with our podcast. So this is, we're putting our money where our mouth is. So here are your choices. Technically you have eight choice, well, seven choices, technically, you know, darkness falls, the haunting OG poltergeist, OG, the exorcist and evil dead. And your choices from evil dead is OG evil dead, evil dead two or evil dead remake. Those are your choices guys. And uh, it all culminates in our big, uh, Halloween finale, uh, the last week of October, where we'll dissect the original Halloween. So I am looking forward to that because, Ryan, that is yeah. one of my favorite films. You know, the original Halloween, I have a lot more respect and um, appreciation for, especially after watching the uh, two Rob Zombie Halloween films. I have a lot more appreciation for, especially now with next year, Halloween Kills is coming, is going to be coming out. Yeah, man. Uh, a so, lot of Halloween stuff in the next couple of years. One other bit of Plotaholics news, and then we can get into this week's stories. And mm -hmm. that is that the Plotaholics, Brian, are going to be offering some coverage of the Indigo Moon Film Woo! Festival. We are getting there. You know what? This is all Shane Wilson legwork, guys. It really is. You know, Shane Wilson, he's always got his eyes open for, you know, ways for us to expand and look at him go. He's done it again. We're gonna have I do my on. best, Brian. I do my best. And well, so, you got your boots on the ground for um Dragon Con, and now you got the boots on the ground for another gym. Yeah, well, we are in touch with the organizers now of uh, Indigo Moon, and so hopefully we will be able to uh, bring you some live coverage from the uh, maybe at least the award ceremony, if not the opening night reception. Uh, I'll also be including some nightly dispatches in long form. Uh, from the screenings, but a ton of movies being shown there. This is in my uh, in my town of Fayetteville, North Carolina. This is the fifth uh, annual, uh, and so they are doing big things down there. They launched five years ago because um, in their sort of mission statement, they talked about how this was a piece of culture that was like desperately needed in this town that was missing in this town. Mm -hmm. um, and you know we have a we have a decent music scene, we have a good art scene, you know all of that. And the the one thing that was sort of quiet was uh, the film scene. And so uh, they bring in tons of movies from all over the world, and we're going to get some director interviews and things like that. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. That's uh, going to be see. so great. Yeah. And if this and if this works out good, you know we maybe we can start become a fixture, and you know I'll make a trip down. So yeah. you're not there by yourself, you know, we'll get some press passes, make it all official. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll, I'm going to do my best to find a way to get you in to some of the live footage, uh, right. while we're, while we're down there. So, uh, Sounds it's not great. just the chain show, but, uh, we have that, and this is going to give us an opportunity to, I mean, it's a, it's a good festival, but it's not a huge festival. Mm -hmm. It'll give us an opportunity to 
get some practice in on how we want to cover these things moving forward. Absolutely. Because, you know, in the next couple of years, you know, we, we've got a five year plan, guys. And mm-hmm. among those plans is going to these festivals, going to conventions, you know, things like that to get you guys the best stuff possible. And, you know, to, you know, to do that, you know, we, we, we obviously we're going to start, you know, a little bit smaller, but, you know, we, we want to grow. We want to do these things. And you know what? You guys that are with us now, we appreciate you. We do this for you guys. We hope to grow it and grow the audience and just make things happen, guys. Yep. And speaking, Brian, of film festivals, big news this week out of the Venice Film Festival. Oh, this is one I was so excited to hear about. Joaquin Phoenix's The Joker wins the Golden Lion Award at the Venice Film Festival. I mean, kudos to Joaquin Phoenix. You know, this is a guy who he never ceases to amaze me or impress me with roles that he does, you know, dealing with the fact that, you know, he's the one that, you know, his brother River, to this day, I still miss River Phoenix because, you know, he was only a couple, you know, they're they're, both of them were not that much older than me. Yeah, you know, River uh, had a lot of potential on him. So do you remember when, um, Joaquin was working on um, I'm Still Here. Yeah. Uh, and he was trolling all of us for like two years. Yeah. I was worried about that guy, man. So was I. I, I was really afraid for him. I thought that we were going to find out in the news that he had, you know, passed away or something. You know, yeah. You know, for all of the accolades that, you know, there was an article that was published when Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out mm-hmm. uh, that called Leonardo DiCaprio the last great movie star uh and they called him that because he they, they said he doesn't need a franchise he doesn't want a franchise like he he, he picks he's very sort of selective with what he does mm-hmm. like he is mm-hmm. the last great sort of like traditional hollywood star right and i and i can buy that but i think joaquin has to be in that conversation too oh absolutely i think that the mount rushmore of of great actors as it stands today in 2019 <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio, Joaquin Phoenix, Denzel Washington, and um, uh, Martin Lawrence in Bad Boys. No, it's a close one. It's not a bad. He just try. barely gets edged out. He right? just sort of edges. He just sort of misses it. Nicholas Cage. Oh man, <laughs> you know I really want to go there, but I just don't think he's got it. I would probably even want to throw Charlize Theron in there. Yeah. Because now if you're going, if you're going performers like cross, you know, across genders and all of that, then yeah, I I can, I can get on board with her. Yeah. Because she is amazing. And she's one that also, she doesn't need a franchise. She's just good at what she does. And she can just throw herself in a role. Colin Farrell's not bad. I probably put Colin Farrell in like a tier below, like a tier or two below. Like the, like he's on the postcards in the Mount Rushmore gift shop. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. I would go there. He he gets a t shirt. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So big things out of the Joker. It wins. Uh, and you know, I can't the Golden wait Line. I, can't I am excited. Story. October first. Oh. Uh, October fourth. Uh, you know the, what? Let's take a look at the poster. It's right here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> October fourth. October 4th. That's awesome. I can't wait. Are you going to be there opening night, Shane? Uh, I think I'd like to be there opening night, but if if I can be honest and I don't want to get flagged by anybody for saying this, but like ever since the Dark Knight Rises, I've been a little gun shy about going to Batman movies on opening night. It's a good call by you. Maybe I'll go Saturday morning. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm feeling like a matinee is in my future. I think that's the best idea. I think that's a good <laughs> idea. And I idea. hate to say that. And honestly, like, I true. prefer matinees anyway because it's less crowded. Less crowded, less money. Yeah, for sure. But still, like these villains, these these people identify with them so much uh, that they worry me sometimes. So I agree 100%. So yeah, we'll go Saturday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's sad Saturday to live in that world. You know, I was the, you know, I think that all of these shootings sort of affect us in different ways and uh, we become so numb to that sort of thing. Yeah. We, we, just, another... we just adjust our everyday way of life. Right. Just... But I remember thinking it, it was during, it was that dark night rises shooting. And it was also the Bataclan in, in Paris a couple of years ago. 
-hmm. because these are things that should be sanctuaries, you know, I mean, just like school shootings and things like that. But this is where people go to feel safe and have a good time. And they try to take that away. And uh, and I think that's pretty shitty. Yeah. Well, you know, we got to keep or, or do or do a pre-opening night like a Thursday. That's a good call by you, Kelly. Yeah. And I'll tell you the truth right now. We, we got to keep going to these films. Otherwise, the yeah. terrorists win. That's right. For sure. But I think I might go like in the afternoon. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, let's see. I uh, and really right. and honestly, Brian, it's not even because I'm afraid. It's because uh, I just don't want to deal with opening night crowds. <laughs> like it's yeah, really a people I'm not thing. A fan. I am not a fan of all the people that are there. Yeah. And I'll probably go to like the 3D XD in the early afternoon. Will the Joker have a 3D version? It better. 3D's it, come so long, such far, such a long way, man. Like I used to be anti 3D movies, but so like, was I. I saw, I saw Endgame by accident in 3D, and oh, yeah. uh, it was yeah. Good for you. And it was good. It was a good experience. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, let's see. Where do we go next? I think the next big news, at least for my money, is uh, the Face Off remake. <laughs> face Off. I'm going to take his face. Oh. I. So first of all, this movie is bananas. Uh, here's an it, action it, film it, that I can it, get behind it, because it, it's, yes. because it's crazy. <laughs> it, it's crazy enough to almost be sci-fi. Right, yeah, it is. And I guess technically it kind of is sci-fi. Uh, now, the director here, uh, Oren Uziel, you know uh, who this guy is? He's that guy that wears pants, right? He does wear pants, but let me give you one hint of something else that he's directed. Whoa! So, if at some point in this movie, the John Travolta character doesn't put on Sonic the Hedgehog's face, I will be <laughs> upset. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be in the loop. Hey, right. Yeah. So yeah, man. I don't know. Honestly, I feel like Face Off is just fine. It like, doesn't need to be remade. Right. And that's what Anita says for sure. Like, and I completely agree. There's no need for another version of this thing. Everything, everything that Nick Cage does badly, yeah, is perfect for that movie. And yeah. everything that John Travolta does badly works. It's like they're the same dude, literally, without their faces off. It's just like each you know what they're going to do, Brian? They're going to take themselves way too seriously this time. Yeah, they really are. Gonna they're they're going to make drag. it like a serious flick. And right. it's just not going to be fun. And I don't know. Who are you going to get to have that manic? How, who are you going to get to where both actors can get that manic-ass personality? I, honestly, the only thing, if they're going to remake it, I think that they should just have Nick Cage play both parts. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and not awesome. even like go through the whole thing, like do like Nutty Professor style, right? Where he's on the screen with each other, but even go so far as to do the face off thing where you take one Nicolas Cage face off and put <laughs> it on the other Nicolas Cage. You know what they, you know what, better yet, you should have it where it's identical twins on opposite sides of the law. <laughs> and one of them has a tattoo in the middle of his forehead, so they have to do the face off. Yeah. <laughs> you like know a what? Swastika. Yeah, a swastika or like a, a cute little unicorn. If you're gonna do a face off sequel, why not just do like go all in and do it and call it body off or skin off? Yeah, just... but because here's what the, here's what they should have. They should have Colin Farrell as the villain and Jamie Foxx as the cop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and then Jamie Foxx is going to be running around with the Irish accent because Colin Farrell has to speak in his native accent. That so is most <laughs> excellent. Yeah, I'm there for that. That movie should. Yeah, okay. Be there if they do that, if we if it comes out with any kind of casting like that, I'm there for it. Or better yet, or better yet, I got you. I've got you. Liam Neeson, who is six foot four, right? Peter Dinklage. Yes, either Peter <laughs> Dinklage or Danny DeVito as the villain. Or Jack Black. Or even Jack Black, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as you get that, like, Jack Black dance, like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, man. oh God. Yeah, it'll, be, so, um, it'll be a face-off and the Man with Two Brains remake in one movie. Yeah, yes. I also just really don't know how. Um, honestly, I want to. I, I want Danny DeVito and Peter Dinklage to start an apparent trap remake. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, that would be oh. so weird. The, that whole thing would be so weird. Hollywood should just listen to us all the right. time. They, they would be, it would be parent trap, but both of the children would have Benjamin Button disease. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now would the always sunny would the always sunny gang be involved in this film as well? Yeah, D and Mac would be the parents. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> oh my god. This movie needs to be made. You yeah. know what? I will panhandle on the street to bankroll this. <laughs> <laughs> Every week we do this show, we come up with an idea for an even better movie. Do you remember what was it? Um, Ebony oh. and Ivory Straight. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Stripes, Ebony and Ivory Stripes. Oh my God, that was such a great idea. That is. Yeah, such if you want to know idea. what we're talking about, you've got to check out the was it Men in Black uh, podcast. It was. it was either the Men in Black podcast. It was either the show before. It, I had, think it was, it was Men either, in Black. It was either the Men in Black podcast or it was the um, Independence Day podcast. It was one of those two. Yeah, well, I think it was the Men in Black one because that's the one that I was drunk for and we were a little looser that night. Then, yeah, it was the Men in Black one. Yeah, <laughs> it was the Men in Black one. Yeah, go check that out. Um, yeah. Let's see. We got some uh, casting news today for Umbrella Academy. Oh, yeah. So I'm very – now, I really enjoyed Umbrella Academy. Uh, a you lot know, of I shows, did not. I didn't watch it, but it feels like something I might like. You really would, because I mean, you're looking at them right now, and I'll tell you something. Ellen Page always. I love Ellen Page. She really is great in this. And um, hold on one second. I want to look it up because the guy, the the because if you haven't seen Umbrella Academy, it's basically it's a series about a family of superheroes. Mm -hmm. You know, at one point in the late '80s. These random women had these children on all on the same day, and they were not pregnant before giving birth. Mm -hmm. And this rich guy gathers up these children, adopts them, and then raises them, but raises them to be a superhero team. Yeah. So they're see, and one of them has the ability to uh, time travel, and he travel. He he he, he sidesteps. And get stuck in time and then the siblings sort of grow apart and then he comes back and you know it's you know ellen page plays um number seven who is you know she's obviously the main character and then you got tom hopper who's an amazing actor he was actually seen, double check because i don't want to say it he was seen in game of thrones he actually played um sam's older brother in game of thrones then um, David Castaneda plays um, number two, and he's been in you know different things, freaks, and freaks of Nature being one of his main ones. And then you know we go down the list. The guy who was um, Robert Sheehan, who plays Klaus, who is probably like the MVP of the show for me. He's the guy on the far right with the pink boa. Mm -hmm. um, he was great, like such a great series, and the ending was so huge. Yeah. So to see these castings for the next um, season, it's going to be great. I cannot wait. If you haven't seen it, definitely go to Netflix and check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna have. This is one that I'm gonna have to check on. If I don't you, know if what. you enjoy the boys, yeah, you should enjoy this. I don't know what. I don't know how it slid by me, but it, but it did for sure. Um, well, we also didn't know each other back. We didn't really know each other when it first came out, so I didn't get to pester you to watch it. That's fair. Um, but Let's if you enjoy see. the boys, you'll like it because flawed superheroes are always fun. For sure. Now, I also uh, I missed this one. I was I meant to do this after the Face Off news, but another reboot that I think maybe we can get a little bit more on board for um, is Tank, Tank Girl. Girl. I didn't mind the original Tank Girl. I don't really remember it, mm -hmm. but I do remember the memory of it that I do have. I watched and I had a huge crush on Lori Petty back then. Right. So. I didn't mind it. I thought it was fun. And, you know, Margot Robbie is everywhere now. Margot Robbie is like the new It Girl. I looked at a lot of covers of the original Tank Girl comic today while I was, like, prepping for this. Mm -hmm. And Margot Robbie looks like the the animated version. Like, the, not the animated, but the, the, the cartoon version. rendering yeah. uh, of Tank Girl. Well, what's funny is that Lori Petty at the time was, like, the perfect choice. But, like, Margot Robbie can be anybody she really can so she's very good 
Yeah, she she's great as Harley Quinn. She was great in Wolf of Wall Street. Very uh, excited to see um, Sirens. Yeah, uh, what do you even, make even the... though no one's really big on Sirens, like DC is not very excited about Sirens. I saw what, what, what do you make of them only showing, only doing theatrical trailers and not doing uh, television trailers? Uh, you know, I, I really, I really think that that sort of loses the crowd, but I think it's kind of smart because they've had a lot of stinkers. So yeah. I get not wanting to spend all the money on TV trailers. It's a lot cheaper on the marketing to just be in the theaters because you don't you don't have to pay for TV ad time. So I think that's it's smart from a budgetary financial standpoint. Expert. Yeah, it does sort of imply that they aren't expecting to make their money back, that they're not plunging a bunch of money into marketing. Well, apparently, from what I've read, and I know this isn't part of the whole thing, but apparently they're looking at James Gunn to sort of be their Kevin and Feige to get. Yeah, I heard that too. Universe on track. And I don't know that he's capable. I don't. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, James Gunn is amazing. I love James Gunn. I love Sean Gunn. I think they're amazing at what they do. But not everyone can be Kevin Feige. No, no. You have to have a completely different kind of brain to do what he's done. Exactly. It's almost like Kevin Feige is like the Bobby Fisher of the film industry. He's already ten steps ahead just because this whole yeah. Sony thing. Happened. He's Professor X, man. He really is. Just because this whole Sony thing happened, you don't think that he had contingencies in place. He knew that the whole thing with Sony was finite. Yeah. So he has plans in place already. Right. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, so, yeah, so Tank Girl, I mean, this has just been announced. There's not a script for it yet or anything like that. So no real news. This Just the idea that, uh, or just the news that Margot Robbie is going to play Tank just Girl. Say and she's going to produce. So. Which is cool. And, I, and I'm glad that she's getting out there because we need women and minorities to be the producers of Hollywood. And we've started to get it already. Will Smith and Jada Pinkett are producers of, sadly enough, they got accused of nepotism because they produced um, Karate Kid with Jaden Smith. But you know what? Who freaking cares? Right. We need my, we need people of color and women in these producer roles. Y you know, people complain every day. Oh, Hollywood always comes out with the same stuff. Well, you know what? I guarantee you, when you have people of color and women that are in these positions of power, We'll start seeing the new stuff. We'll start yeah. seeing things that are fresh and exciting. So kudos, man. Good for her, man. Yeah. Good for her. And she did it without, and the way I've seen it, I, now granted, I don't know all of Margot Robbie's catalog, but I appreciate the fact that she also hasn't sort of compromised herself to get to this point. She's worked really, really hard. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to talk bad on any female actresses. I'm, I'm really not. But what I'm saying is that Margot Robbie has really, sort of what Angelina Jolie started, Margot Robbie is taking the ball and running yeah. with as well. Yeah, um, I am mostly unfamiliar with Margot Robbie's catalog as well. I mean, Wolf of Wall Street, um, she did that movie with Tina Fey. Um, what was it called? Something Tango Foxtrot. Um, whiskey tango foxtrot whiskey tango foxtrot and then she did uh clearly suicide squad um but yeah i mean she's good and i'm glad to see her get get work uh it's always absolutely. good to see it's always good to see the good ones get work you know absolutely and she's from what i understand she's like the nicest person her fame has not gotten in the way of who she is and yeah. i always appreciate hearing things like that so kudos Absolutely. to Marvel. Uh, one other little story here before we get to our upcoming releases, and that is that we uh, got this week some new footage from Rob Zombie's forthcoming Three from Hell. Now this I'm kind of excited for because I wasn't a big fan of House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, I was expecting, because there was some, I don't know if you remember, but there was a lot of, um, uh-oh, the puppy said, there was a lot of sort of wives' tale and rumors around the original House of a Thousand Corpses. And the one thing that I really, really like about Rob Zombie's films, though, is I love the dialogue and the character interaction. Say what you will about the way he sets a scene. Say, say what you will about some of his writing. Say what you will about whatever. His dialogue is really over the top but it's believable. You know, I could see people saying what these characters say, you know, it's very natural. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious to see it. And Sid Haig and um, Bill Mosley always wins. And um, I mean, I'm not, 
I'm not as big a fan of Sherry Moon Zombie, but she is good at what she does as well. She she sort of takes the evil scream queen scream queen crown for me. Yeah, yeah, she's not bad. She's not bad at what she's asked to do. Right. Uh, for sure, that's the case. Um that brings us finally then to this week's version of What's happening this week? Yeah, what's coming? Well, Brian, what's coming is not much, but uh, we do have what is clearly the beginning of starting last weekend with uh, the release of It Chapter 2, uh, the launch of this year's Halloween horror sort of offerings. Okay, so we got an Eli Roth flick that I didn't hear anything about. Freaks, didn't hear anything about. Hustlers, I saw the trailer for this on um, attached to um, Hobbs and Shaw, and um, yeah, okay, yeah. I Hustlers guess. has a surprisingly high rating on Rotten Tomatoes, given the premise uh, yeah, of cool. a bunch of ex strippers taking it to their uh, Wall Street clients, uh, and in what sounds a little bit like a heist film. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, I might not go and see it. I mean, I might yeah. maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But I mean, Jennifer Lopez has really sort of it was all it's almost like after Geely, some of her stinkers in the early two thousands. Anaconda. Anaconda. Well, Anaconda wasn't too terrible. Uh, you know, it, it, it could have been eh, all right, yeah, it was bad. It's honestly, bad. my honestly Actually, Anaconda is only bad because the CGI was awful. And then some. Yeah, <laughs> and and I wasn't a fan of J of Jennifer Lopez in that movie. But Jennifer Lopez, she's really she's gotten better. Like, she's gotten better. She's gotten more selective in some of her roles. She's not just taking anything. So you know, I'm I'm willing to give this a go. Um, you know, see what's what with it. And um, you know, I mean, maybe we'll see. The haunt, haunt. I don't know. Um, Eli Roth. To be honest, I'm not that big of a fan. I mean, I started to watch Hostel and got bored. And turned it off. Yeah, I'm not a huge Eli Roth fan either. Freaks has an interesting premise. Essentially, think, think, um, oh, uh, what was the Cloverfield movie with John Goodman? Uh, um, I know what you mean. Yeah, 24 Cloverfield Lane or something like that. Yeah, um, that sounds right. Something like that. Anyway, uh, let I don't want to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> The only thing I'm seeing for freaks ten. Is like it's ten Cloverfield Lane. Gotcha. Uh, ten. So it's like ten Cloverfield Lane, but the hostage, quote unquote, is a kid. Um, so this girl is is kept locked up inside of the house. There's been some sort of an event where there are abnormal, what they call abnormals outside. I'm not sure if they're zombies. I'm not sure if they're aliens or what. Um, but at least that's the way that the world has been sold to her in order to keep her inside. Okay. So, um, it right. sounds good. It sounds interesting. And Bruce Dern is, you know, he, he's the guy you love to hate in movies. Yeah. Um, if you don't know who B Bruce Dern is, he, he's the father of Laura Dern, who was in um, episode eight. And he's the, he's the guy that you love to hate in a lot of movies. One of his movies um, was actually Digstown with, um, what the hell is that guy's name? You know who I'm talking about in a Diggs Town. I know, James, I know James who you're Woods. talking about in general. James Woods, James Woods, and Louis Gossett Jr. Yeah. He was in Down Periscope as the asshole admiral. The the film with um Kelsey Grammer and Rip Torn. Um, what else was he? Yeah, he he's been in his fair share of things. He has a a huge resume. If you don't know who um Bruce Dern is, I would go to um, Wikipedia, check him out. And um, so, I mean, you know, so if they if they landed Bruce Dern, Bruce Dern isn't to the point in his career where he'll do anything because he's hurting for money. So, I mean, hey, why not? Check it out. Yeah. And the reason that this makes this week's uh, opening list is because it's really just another slow week. I mean, these two of these movies aren't even open, aren't even showing near where I live. Right. I'm pretty um, sure Haunt and Freaks aren't shown anywhere near you. Right. Now, there are a ton of movies coming out this week, but the only one that's getting any kind of buzz at all is Hustlers. Yeah. The, 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 it's it, September is usually a kind of a slow time for, in well, some instances, because you're, you're coming off the summer. 
and you know the the winter movies haven't really come out yet. We're not going to have anything major, you know, film wise until you know mid to late October. Well, the Joker comes out on October fourth. Don't forget right. that. Right. So yeah, besides Joker, but besides Joker, what else is coming out? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't tell you. We got I mean, essentially we're in that part of the year now where you get one pretty good one every week, and everything else is just kind of just there because no yeah. one, no one wants to open in December. I wonder why. You're I right. think there's I think there's some move. I don't know if you've heard of it, Shane. It's kind of obscure. Um yeah. Star War Star Battle um Star Scott, World. Sky Fight. Sky oh, Fight. Wait, is that the one where they uh where they do fighting and they are also in the sky? I think so. Yeah, there's some guy named like Don Everyone and mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. That sounds familiar. Bill, Bill Cloud Slipper. Yeah, Bill Cloud Slipper. Yeah, I yeah, liked him. Yeah. When I was a kid, yeah. I was a big fan of Bill Cloud Slipper. Oh, yeah, he, he, he was the man. You know, he, he's the older cousin of Kip Cloud Kicker, you know. Yeah, Kip Cloud Kicker and Bill Cloud Licker. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up with all of the names. Uh, <laughs> You guys know what we're talking about. Episode nine is coming out in December. No <laughs> one wants to be in December. Hell, I don't think anyone wants to be in January or February. I swear to God, while Star Wars is in the theaters, I don't think anybody wants to come out with anything. I no, sure as hell would. I but, sure I mean, as hell. A bunch of things were released right around the time Endgame was. So, I yeah, mean, none of them made any money it. either. But yeah, because Endgame went on to make like a, a billion dollars. Right. I said it. I said that Endgame was good. Did I not say Endgame was going to be the number one film of all time? I you said did. it. I called it, and I was right. Yeah, I still, I am still kind of of the belief that they made themselves look like pretty desperate people to get. Yeah, them. they they really did. They really did. and they set a real shitty precedent too, because now Spider Man got a re release with extra footage. Like, get yeah, out of here. Like, you know what, dude? Stop it. Put the stuff, put all this extra crap on the, the home video. Well, release. the other thing is it's starting to feel a little bit like you bought a video game and now you have to pay for the DLC. Yes. Like, just give me a complete product. Exactly. And I'll tell you something right now. They should have done that Hulk scene. I, don't, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. No. Basically, it's a scene where we actually see Professor Hulk in action. Yeah. And you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's not like was he just killing some calculus? No, he actually saved people from like a burning building. Main reason why I wish they would have done it, put it in the movie, is because Reginald Vell Johnson, aka Carl Winslow, was in it. Ah, I like so, that. Yeah, so you know, Al Powell had a successful return to the it uniform. only works if at the end of the scene, Hulk looks at the destruction and goes, Did I do that? <laughs> that would be great. Um, that would be all right. Well, hey, just a quick reminder for those of you still with us. As soon as we go off the air, we will be posting the poll for you to vote for our October 7th movie uh, out of these five titles. Yep. So once again, for you guys, Darkness Falls, The Haunting, OG Poltergeist, OG The Exorcist, and Evil Dead. However, if you vote Evil Dead, you need to specify in the comments, do you want OG Evil Dead? Evil Dead 2 or the Evil Dead remake. Because and if you don't specify, then we will just pick. We'll pick. We'll, we'll, if we'll it just wins. Pick. Mm -hmm. If uh, Evil Dead wins and you don't specify. I honestly realize we'll I feel like maybe we should just just go with whatever that poster is for. Well, that's the original. Well, that's I think, the we, ori I think that's the original. I think we should just go with that one because you don't want to split the vote, you know? That's true. That's like you don't want OG Evil Dead to get one vote. Like you don't want Evil Dead, the, the three of them to get like 10 votes each. That's and then, true. You know what I mean? Let's vote for Evil Dead and, you know, we'll go from there. Yeah, we'll go from there. But yeah, but the, those are your choices. So as soon as we go off the air, it's going to be up on Facebook page. Darkness Falls, Evil Dead, The Exorcist, OG Exorcist, OG Poltergeist, and The Haunting. Your now, vote's going to uh, be taken. On the now, Brian, movie. I don't know if you remember, but Darkness Falls is the scariest movie I've ever seen about the truth about the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> oh god i think what's so great is that in the, is, is this the movie where the rock just like jumps out from under your bed punches you in the face and steals all your teeth 
Is this it? No, that's not that. That's not that one. Oh, well, shit. No, what you're thinking it? of the movie called Surprise, I'm the Rock and I'm Under Your Bed. Oh, that. Oh, man. How did I make that? Don't mistake? tell mom the babysitter's under here, too. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's sexy. And now, and now this is the 2003 version of Darkness Falls, correct? Yeah. With the great Emma Caulfield of Buffy the Vampire Slayer fame, she played Anya from uh, season two all the way to the end of the series. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Ke Ke Kelly Russell in the house. Got to give Kelly a uh, shout out. Mr. Superfan himself. Yeah, Kelly is uh, is definitely becoming a fixture and i like that i like to see the fixtures i like seeing fixtures just like anita is as well Absolutely. Anita, anita's definitely a fixture so yep so so those are your, those are your choices and again as soon as we go off the air the polls will be available on the plotaholics podcast website plotaholics.com yeah, for a week minus a one week. hour <laughs> right so from when the show goes off the air until net the beginning of next week's show beginning of In next fact, week's show I'm going to go ahead and post it if I can get it. We're over going early. Time. We're going early. So, you guys, if there is a particular flick that you want to see in this regard, the, this is the supernatural horror. Um, well, is we, this is like the demons, ghosts, haunted houses. Yeah, demons, ghosts, haunted houses genre. So, go to the Plotaholics uh, Facebook page at Plotaholics. Go to our website, plotaholics.com. We'll even put we'll, we'll even put it up on um Instagram at some point as well. You know, either way, wherever we're at and you know where we're at, go there and vote. Um, and yeah, just go from there. And you know, next week we'll have an all new poll for you guys. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I I I called myself good. having this this thing ready to go, but uh, maybe Sorry. I did not save it. <laughs> No! I mean, how hard is it to create a survey with one question? So that will be up at the end of the show. We won't bog you down with any more of that. Hey, uh, real quick, you can catch uh, Men in Black, the podcast live now on any uh, podcast subscription service. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to leave a review. Yes, uh, leave reviews where you can. Share them where you can. Tell people about us. Word of mouth is still it. Yeah, and uh, and on Monday, you will be able to hear both Brian and myself stumble our way through a podcast about bad boys. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you Mike gonna Etheria do? always I'm coming boring. in under the under the wire here. Yeah, bad. Ooh, do, do, do. Sorry, I like that song. I like that's not a bad song, but even when they sing it in the movie, I'm like, why are you why singing are you doing, that? <laughs> why are you doing it wrong? Right. And it's uh, even worse in the second movie because then they try to go to the verses and it's like, dude, we really got to learn the lyrics. It's like, oh, okay. yeah. well, I don't want to say too much more about it or I won't have no. anything to say tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, <so laughs> um, well, you know, everybody wants to be like Mike. Remember that. Yeah. Area. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Late to the party. Late to the party. Everyone wants to be fashionably late. I can just imagine if, if Mike Ferry was fashionably late to a party, he'd come in wearing a, a neon orange zoot suit. Mark Ferrier is our Kramer. He real oh God, I see <laughs> it. I can see Mike Ferrier's. He just like pops in at the end of the show. He's like, yeah. hey guys, what's going on? And, every, yeah. and, and everybody loves him, you know, like <laughs> he just rolls in at random times. Right. Hey, Wait, like, does that, hey, does Brian. That that, hey, Brian, hey, Brian, I was thinking, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so does that mean, though, that at one point he's going to spin off and do like a stage show and start like cursing out black people? Well, I hope not because he'll, he'll crush them with his wallet. Right. <laughs> I hope not. But at the same time, you can never tell about Mike. That's true. Mike has a dark side. He does. I hear. I hear. I heard Mike one time went to a bakery. Uh huh. And he got dark chocolate. Oh no. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a bad boy. Bad boys, bad boys. What's that? You know. You know what I like, Brian. Whenever um, somebody comments something like "lol," I can recycle it anytime I want to. That's so, true. <laughs> so you oh. can be like, Mike is such a racist, and I would be like. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> oh Lord, if Mike said, Yeah, I agree with that statement previously. Right. Mike's a racist. I agree. <laughs> right. Or like uh, <laughs> Mike, sorry, the KKK rally was moved to a different location. <laughs> 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 yes yeah. oh my god if laughter is the cure of all that tells you i am now immortal <laughs> oh that's pretty good like anita gives me way less to work with yeah um, anita's smart she just sits and watch she doesn't give us any ammo <laughs> Right. That was so great. I bow. Uh, <laughs> Shane is it's drunk. True. With power. It's true. Have you ever tried to go? Have you ever tried to go mad without power? No one listens to you. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, I think that we have jumped the shark for this week. So um, hey. we can go ahead. We should go ahead and also say that, to our knowledge, Mike Feria was not looking for a KKK rally. Nor no, is he a just, racist. <laughs> these are just jokes. We're being, you know, we're being Dave Chappelle. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> and for those of you, you know, and, and just in case, if you need more Plotaholic stuff, make sure you go to Plotaholics.com where you can check out all of our blog, all of our, you know, our reviews, op-eds, all of that. Um, you can check out my previous article where I actually gave my uh, my personal thoughts on the uh, Dave Chappelle comedy special, Sticks and Stones which was actually liked and retweeted by the great Roland S. Martin of uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered. It was um, a very good article, and uh, and it got a great deal of traction. It was our most successful article since Save AP Bio. Yeah, and you know what? I'm happy because we each got a big, we each got a biggie. Yeah, so. So, yeah, so guys, don't, don't take it seriously. Mike Ferry is not a racist. Mike, Mike, Mike Ferry is the greatest dude. He's a good sport. It's just... We had to give him shit for coming to the party late. Right. <laughs> we love um, him, I love, I, I can't believe that it's never occurred to me to click people's comments out of context. <laughs> this is amazing. That is definitely going <laughs> to become a fixture on the show now. It's going to have to be, right? It's too it's good gonna not to. to. It's too good not to. So yeah. just realize that when you guys comment, we're going to use them. Can you imagine when we start getting trolls? Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't um, wait either. Do I have time real quick for a story? Please. All right. So I, I've already referenced Roland Martin Unfiltered. Um, I'm, I'm a regular watcher of that show to get my news. A lot of news in my community. And there was a news article that took place a couple of months ago about a individual who decided to basically assault a young black teenager mm -hmm. and because the guy it was basically it was a George, it was it could have been another george zimmerman incident and i happened to say because it happened here in the city of pittsburgh and i commented that i wish that i was nearby because i would have involved myself mm -hmm. and you know i had a lot of people you know giving me props and, and you know some other people trash talking and one person who and I know their Twitter, it's a it's a troll account because it's just and 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 J J J J J, you know, trash talking, telling me that I wouldn't right. have done anything and blah blah blah. And then he started going to some of my my personal videos and making fun of me. And I just said, Thank you for your constructive criticism, sir. I truly <laughs> appreciate yeah. what you have brought to the table. Thank you for helping me grow. <laughs> so yeah. I can't wait to get trolls just so. We can kill yeah. them with the you know if you were Mike Ferrio, what you would have said would have to said. that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's just gonna be my default. You know, Mike Ferrio says that's a good review. Sir. That's a good review. Actually, good review. I think that I want that on a t-shirt. That was a good review, Mike Ferrio. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. We need to go, we need to go to the uh, the three furies press and, and give them that idea. Whoa. Um, oh man, Shane is getting ready to rock out. Yeah, <laughs> baby. Woo! Uh, you know, I have um over here. I think maybe it won't screw it up. I have a uh, a record player that yeah. is also a Bluetooth compatible, right? 
And sometimes I leave the Bluetooth on and other people in my apartment building will sync to it. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. <laughs> so one day there was a, it was before we realized what was happening. This was a few months ago. You could hear this like reggae music just at random. And we were like, is our apartment haunted by like <laughs> a reggae artist? <laughs> <laughs> eventually because party. it wouldn't stay on for long because they they can connect but it's like kind of spotty right so you would hear like a little bit of music but not long enough that you could actually track it down like to where it was awesome. <laughs> that's almost like i was listening to something one day and sharing it taking the car now my my phone connects to my car's bluetooth so she came home one day and i'm listening to something i'm like why did my phone is my phone broken and I'm like shaking, and then I look, and it says going to my car. I'm like, oh, snap. That is so cool. Yeah, it's pretty funny. One time, I, was, I have another Bluetooth speaker that I use to hook up the guitar sometimes, and I was outside practicing guitar on the patio, and it was around Halloween. And all of a sudden, something like connected it, uh -huh. and it just goes, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Also, oh, man. That is so great. Yeah, it's pretty excellent. Um, I love Mike Ferrier's comments. Just, Mike they're Ferrier's so comments. They are just the perfect amount of vague. They really um, are. Mike like Ferrier. this this one might be my new favorite. I just wish that I could carry them over from week to week. <laughs> <laughs> but... Anyway, um, we're going to call it a night at that. Uh, yeah, we will absolutely. see you guys again next week. Absolutely. And uh, be on the lookout for that Bad Boys podcast. Coming Monday. That's right. We'll see you again real soon. We're the Plotaholics. Ripping plots apart for you. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs>